Finding wildlife in the wintertime is never very easy. Most of the reptiles and amphibians that I love to see are in a state of brumation underground, and even birds and mammals seem to move less on especially cold days unless they are foraging for food. There is one group of amphibians, however, who emerge from their underground lairs on wet winter nights to brave the cold and pass on their genes. On one such night a few days ago, myself and a few other herp enthusiasts were lucky enough to encounter some of these adorable and rarely seen animals. Alright everybody, now check out this little guy. This right here is a spotted salamander. Now spotted salamanders are one of the larger species of salamander that we have here in the US. They're found all the way from eastern Canada down the east coast of the US and even into the midwestern part of the country. Now these guys mostly inhabit deciduous forest habitats and especially forests with ephemeral pools in them. Now ephemeral pools are basically just temporary water sources that are usually fishless um, and the reason that these guys want pools like that without fish is because during the breeding season uh, These will all migrate down to those pools, which is exactly what this one was doing and in those pools They will congregate uh, and they will breed and deposit their egg masses Now those egg masses will remain as eggs for anywhere from three to eight weeks They will hatch and these guys actually have a larval form um, that is completely aquatic with gills and then after I think two or three months as a larva, they will emerge on land as fully formed adult salamanders like this one. Hold on a second, Ben. Those eggs were even cooler than you thought. It turns out that spotted salamanders actually have a symbiotic relationship with an algae that lives within the egg masses and helps provide young with photosynthetic energy. In turn, the algae gets to live inside the salamanders and passed on to all of their progeny. Now, once they've matured into adults and they're more terrestrial, they can prey on a wide variety of different items. Uh, I would say mostly their diet is comprised of invertebrates, but an adult such as this one can take other salamanders, and cannibalism has been documented in rare cases with this species. You know, usually during the day, they're going to be hiding under logs and rocks. Uh, that's called fossorial, means mostly underground. Probably 95% of the time, uh, these guys are just hiding underground where it's moist. And the only time they're really above ground is in late winter or early spring on rainy nights like this when they do migrate to those vernal pools. Now, why are spotted salamanders important? Well, as amphibians, they are extremely sensitive to environmental change and especially water quality because they do have to go to these urinal pools every year. Uh, and that means if those habitats are disturbed or if there are any kind of pollutants in the water, um, oftentimes salamander populations will be the first uh, to respond to those changes. And so scientists can take a look at these to kind of gauge the ecosystem health uh, and see if things are properly balanced. It's not just their status as an indicator species that makes spotted salamanders so important. Throughout their life cycle, these animals will progress through many different trophic levels, starting out as protein snacks for fish and eventually feeding high-level consumers while preying on a good variety of small organisms from both terrestrial and aquatic ecosystems. Very similarly to snakes, this makes adult salamanders part of the critically important middle of the trophic pyramid. As an added bonus, salamander larvae love to snack on mosquito larvae. Now, for a salamander, these guys are actually pretty long-lived as well. Uh, adults have been documented up to around 20 years old in the wild, but up to 30 years in captivity, which is pretty neat. Uh, and I guess as far as max size goes, this is pretty much as big as you can expect them to get. Uh, up to nine inches, I believe, is the maximum size for a spotted salamander, but the average for a mature adult would be more around seven. Now, if you are lucky enough to come across one of these, uh, it is very important that you handle them gently. They are very fragile animals. And also, if you can wet your hands before you handle them, mine have dried out a little more than I would have liked, but just wetting your hands before you handle them helps protect that mucus layer, which is on their skin, and helps them fight off infections and keep pathogens uh, 
off of their body. If you are looking for ways to help conserve these animals and live in an area where they are found, just watch out for them crossing roads on wet nights during the breeding season. In the event that you do see any, please stop and move them off the road in the direction that they were heading when safe. Every salamander that you save has the potential to be a parent of up to 200 offspring, so every one that doesn't get hit really does make a difference for the population. Well everyone, that's all for today's video. I really hope that you enjoyed and learned something new about the spotted salamander. If you did enjoy, it would be great if you could leave a like, and consider subscribing to my channel for more educational wildlife content. This has been Zeno of The Wild Report, signing out.